Greetings everybody, coming to you from my 2018 BMW 540D. This is the US model. It is incredibly rare. There were only uh, 298 of these sold in the US before they pulled the plug on diesels. I know this number because of the recall that was issued for the um, EGR cooler. Um, it said number of units affected 298. So there was a lot of speculation prior to that about um, how many of these were sold. All the speculation was low numbers, but uh, the actual number is a bit higher than what what people thought. So I wanted to share a couple interesting things about this uh, car, just random. So let's see, I can probably stop here because there's nobody behind me. So right now the contact BMW message is uh, up on the screen because of uh, engine oil service required. And what it does is it actually locks you out of uh, all the functions, Nothing's, nothing else works. I can't hit the map button. Nothing does anything there. You actually have to physically scroll down to close the message. Um, the other thing that's kind of interesting is the sunroof. It's pretty smart. So if you, if you double click this button like that, it closes both the glass roof and the shade. So now somebody is coming, so I have to continue to get out of their way. We'll see if they're following me down this road. But anyway, in the same way with opening, double click it, and you gotta get it firmly enough, and it opens both the shade and the glass part, which is pretty cool. I've not seen any other cars that do that, and um, also, I thought that was pretty smart that they did that. So anyway, um, I have owned this car for, let's see, a year and nine months now. I've put about 17,000 miles on it, a little bit over that. And um, I've done some other videos about my service history with this car, but some of the highlights are while I owned it and it was still under warranty. I got a new DEF tank, got a new turbo, uh, got a new valve cover, which included replacing all the injector seals. That was actually a pretty major job. Um, there was some oil on top of it. In retrospect, they probably didn't need to do that job, but uh, they actually had a regional rep come in and look the car over, and he's the one that ordered the replacement of the turbo and the valve cover. So he must have seen something. Um, the, uh, the turbo, it was working fine, but it was spewing soot out the side of it so they replaced that I still have a bit of an exhaust smell under the hood but that may be the EGR cooler that's covered under the recall um, I have not done that yet I'm gonna probably wait until the time expires or just before the time expires on the recall to get that done um, because it'll eventually go bad again, and the longer I can make this one last, uh, then the longer I won't have to deal with it out of pocket um, when I get the replacement in there. It's, it's unclear as to whether they're replacing it with a better part or not, but um, either way, I don't know what it costs, but I'm sure it's expensive because I think it's the EGR cooler and EGR valve all wrapped into one. So it's a pretty complex part. I don't think I ever looked it up. I think it was a thousand dollar part and then probably a few hours labor to do it. So yeah, I um, I don't really have any drivability issues or check engine lights or anything like that in, in relation to that. So I'm just gonna hold off on that. As far as the oil change goes, um, I changed it last year 
um, in November, and uh, I want to say it was 8,000 miles ago, give or take. So it's yelling at me because of time, not miles. I am going to, at the very least, go 10,000 miles on this soil, uh, probably a little longer because um, pretty much every single drive I take, I completely warm up the car. There's been a lot of highway driving, so the recommended interval that they have of 10,000 miles over a year, that includes a lot of, uh, I'm sure, uh, you know, people not fully warming it up, people taking a lot of short trips and, and in my 10,000 miles, there's going to be a lot fewer hours on the engine than probably the average person who drives 10,000 miles in a year. So that doesn't actually get taken into account for oil change intervals is the engine hours. You know, that would probably be a better way to calculate oil change intervals. But anyway... I, um, I'm not one to keep cars a long time, um, so actually keeping a car for a year and nine months is very unusual for me, um, history, my history with cars is that, uh, three to six months is much more typical for me to keep a car. Let's go ahead and do, this is uphill, but let's go ahead and do an acceleration run here just for fun. This car is so fun to do this with. Just that sudden blast of torque when it kicks in, it's just so addictive. This thing is pretty quick. I did a Nota 60 video a while back. You can check that out if you're interested. Um, it was actually quicker than I expected. Um, and that's with that type of launch that I just did, which isn't really a launch. I just basically pin the pedal and let the car do the rest. And it was still a rather impressive number. So check that out if you're interested. Um, as of now, there's only two of these for sale in the country that I could find. One is by a private seller. Um, say in California and then the other one is it's at a dealer and it's actually been for sale for two years it looked like it hopped around from dealer to dealer and uh, just kept going from dealer to auction to another dealer to another auction and then the dealer that has it now has been sitting on it for two years and actually that you can see a couple different entries in the Carfax for reported mileage and it like went like 10 miles in two years so that would probably be not a good one to buy um, I can't remember the name of the dealership actually yeah I think it's Highline Auto Group or something like that I don't know anything about them I don't even know where they are I just happened to remember the name because I was looking at it the other day but yeah, so if you want one of these, it's going to be hard to find. Um, I would say one of the most critical things you want to look for is that they use the proper uh, oil. There's also a thing about uh, these cars, along with a lot of other BMWs from this era, came with the wrong transfer case oil from the factory. That was something I got the BMW de dealer to do under warranty. There is actually a technical service bulletin or whatever BMW calls them, SIB, about that. Um, and I did have to fight them a bit to get that done. Um, but they did it. What the problem was, was under hard acceleration from a stop, when it shifted from one to two, I could uh, feel a shuddering uh, pretty prominent. The dealer first of all claimed they couldn't feel it, then they said they did, but then they didn't. Yeah, it was kind of a nightmare to get them to, uh, to 
address that. But uh, huh, we got sun and rain at the same time. I wonder if I'm going to see a rainbow. But yeah, after they they changed that, um, it took actually a couple thousand miles for it to cycle through and and uh, soak the clutches or whatever they call it. Um, but now uh, I would say the problem is 99.9% .9 gone. In, in in some cases, 100%. In some cases I can feel a very slight I'm not going to try to get past that at higher speeds that was kind of sticking out into the road there but anyway once I get around this turn here and past a couple of houses I'm going to do one more and just I'm going to kind of feel out what we've got going on here nobody's behind me that's why I like these country roads okay punch it yeah, I mean, there was a teeny tiny little bit. I, you might have been able to hear it in the video. I do have the sunroof open, of course, so you can hear some wind as well. But anyway, yeah, so loving this car. There's just nothing else like it sold ever sold in the U.S. I mean, you the closest is going to be the E250 Blue Tech which is also an awesome car. I have that engine in my GLK 250 Blue Tech, and it's super impressive. One of the Mercedes Benz's best built engines ever. Again, if properly maintained. Um, but it's just not as fast as, as the BMW is. Uh, having the four cylinder OM 651 versus the six cylinder, whatever the engine code is for this car. Um, this car is kind of my garage queen. Um, in the winter I do drive it, but only when the roads are dry. So I mean, if there is a little bit of like a salt over spray, that's okay. I'm, I'm okay with that, but I won't drive it in anything wet in the winter time. Anyway, that's my latest thoughts on this car. Have a great day, everyone.